So um, Fedora as a platform for IIIF and solar discovery. Um, again, a lot of affinity for what we just saw. This is kind of our current status with what we have going on at uh, uh, Texas A&M libraries. Uh, I'm first gonna talk about our ingest workflow. And uh, our ingest workflow, I'm afraid is uh, kind of more uh, developer hands-on. We would like to move in the direction of um, having li like a, a librarian oriented backend where uh, they were more able to do curation, but um, we're, we're moving that direction, but kind of the status quo <clears throat> is we start with SAF, a simple archive format, um, which is kind of a DSpace centric format, but that's what we're used to. Then we have this tool called Magpie, the metadata assignment GUI providing ingest and export. We're fond of uh, cute acronyms. Um, I'll go into more detail about that in a bit here. Uh, Fedora, I think y'all might've heard of that. Um, and then uh, Solar is uh, kind of the next step in the process. We have our own Triple F manifest generator that also um, provides information for uh, additional parts of the process. And then uh, finally, the, uh, our, our kind of new application called Sage, the solar aggregation engine is um, something that leverages solar and um, also allows us to kind of customize our uh, discovery views. Um, so after I talk about that, uh, that whole technical workflow, then I'll talk a little bit about um, the current exhibits and collections that we have. Um, we have a number of spotlight exhibits um, that have uh, the actual assets hosted in Fedora. Um, then we have um, kind of just as an aside, we have this uh, Avalon service that is using the same Fedora instance. Um, Avalon being, oh, what do you call it? Like uh, these call them Hydra heads, but I don't know. The <laughs> I think solution <laughs> bundles, I feel like. Uh, Sambera solution bundle. It, it certainly is a solution bundle. Uh, so that's great. Uh, and, then, and then finally, uh, we'll talk about uh, using Sage uh, to customize your discovery. So, okay, so um, starting with SAF ingest uh, into Magpie and then uh, a PCDM uh, export to Fedora. Um, so Magpie, we've presented on uh, my, my colleagues and I at a number of you know, conferences over the years. And this thing is kind of, it's kind of one of those uh, <laughs> oversized Swiss Army knives. It has way more attachments than you might need for any given task. Uh, it's uh, kind of intended as our library and oriented backend, but it's had so many uh, owners over the years that um, it has uh, gotten a, a very divergent set of features. Um, nevertheless, the developers have found uh, immense use for it in kind of the current major workflow that we're using to get stuff into uh, Fedora repositories. So um, we have a, a whole lot of legacy tooling in place for librarians to generate SAF archives because we are kind of a legacy DSpace shop and still uh, run strong with DSpace. Um, Magpie can ingest um, SAF archives. Um, in addition to many other different formats, and it can uh, also do an export to Fedora uh, using Portland Common Portland Common Data Model RDF triples. Uh, so, yeah, once the content gets into uh, into Fedora, um, you have a lot of triples and a lot of resources. And it's great. Um, we employ a LD path transform in Fedora to uh, properly index these items according to the metadata guidelines that the librarians have set up for us. And uh, I think I can show you that transform real fast here. That should be coming up, right? Well, anyway, you can see a bunch of- uh, yeah, We can see it, or yeah, I, I can. Bunch of, uh, stuff in the DC schema, a bunch of stuff in the DC term schema. Um, I guess maybe it's interesting to note we did have to rely on a local schema for some stuff, uh, so be it. Um, but anyway, that, that's going to tell you, uh, it's going to tell Fedora where to grab the values, what kind of format they're going to be, and where to put them in, uh, in solar. And we can come over to solar land real fast. Well, let's go to Fedora land real fast, right? So here's some of the stuff that hangs out in uh, Fedora. Here's uh, some of the objects I'm gonna be talking about later. 
and um, they are structured in this kind of PCDM format uh, where you talk about you know the first and the last uh, page proxies and all that kind of thing. That's not what we're really going to get into in this presentation, I don't think. But um, all these uh, mostly Dublin Core uh, kind of properties get mapped by the LD path transform to wind up in, um, well, here's like our solar here. Here's a view of the solar and we can see cool information getting into solar, like all these details about this uh, cool document. All right, so uh, next piece of the puzzle is our IIIF manifest generation service. Um, so this uh, is a standalone um, application that will on demand read uh, this uh, PCDM RDF structure out of Fedora and generate um, a collection manifest for a collection much like we just uh, saw in our, in our Fedora there. Um, so you get a collection manifest from a collection, you get a presentation manifest then down at the, um, at the individual object or item levels. I can maybe show you one of those. Yeah, I'm not gonna fire it off right now, but here's a sample I was working with earlier. We can see once again, our metadata coming through such as it is. We're using the IIIF uh, version two API. So uh, some of the stuff we are able to um, stick up kind of in the privileged fields up here. The rest of it, we just like put down in the metadata just as metadata, arbitrary metadata. Um, yeah, so having stuff in uh, PCDM, or I'm, I'm sorry, in IIIF format uh, affords you a lot of different ways to deal with it later on. Uh, so it's a really nice convenient protocol for a lot of reasons. Um, so then our kind of final piece is uh, SAGE, which is our acronym for the Solar Aggregation Engine. And uh, what we do with this is we read in fields from a solar core. Um, you might imagine in this case, the Fedora solar core. Um, and then it will uh, you know, read all that stuff into like ins its internal metadata schema. And then it will write from that internal metadata schema to um, an arbitrary other solar core. And uh, in the process, uh, it also has these operators that will kind of do um, conversions, amendments, um, and enhancements to the metadata. And um, so the, the metadata coming out of Fedora are pretty, pretty felicitous. They're nice uh, because we are, after all, using that LDF, LD path transform. But um, we are interested in aggregating content from other places um, in the future, such as DSpace, maybe. Um, the Avalon stuff's going to be looking different, maybe. Um, so this, this is standing in as kind of a place where we can do that homogenization and try to do a mapping from uh, you know, original uh, schemata to like our one schemata that we want to uh, inform a certain discovery process. So um, this is what the, the process for Sage uh, looks like. Um, you start with some solar cores. Now, uh, then you run a job and then you get an output solar core, what I'm calling here the Sage solar core. The job is gonna consist of reading operations upon uh, your source solar. The metadata coming in from those readers is gonna be operated upon. It's gonna end up then in Sage's internal metadata schema. And then a writer will uh, map that internal metadata to whatever your um, destination schema is gonna be. And I can uh, actually, I think, come over and show you what that looks like in an interface, supposing that Zoom will let me click on my tabs and such. So, okay, so here's the interface to Sage. I, I bet I have a stale token, I'm gonna refresh the page. I'm gonna breathe a sigh of relief as well. Uh, so the internal metadata schema is entirely configurable. Um, this, again, in this case is just, it looks like what we have in Fedora and that what we have in Fedora as much as possible looks like what the librarians told us it should look like based on the metadata recommendations. Um, so here's your internal metadata um, schema, right? Uh, here's where you set up a solar core. Some of them can be sources that you read from, others can be destinations to which you write. Um, you know, you set up the authentication and 
everything like that. When you come over to a reader, um, well then, uh, what you're gonna see, if you try to edit one of those, is the first part of that mapping and also a filter. So if we're talking about um, the Berger Cloonan collection, uh, for instance, if I may, um, we're gonna use the has parent filter to filter it down to just things that are in a particular collection for that. And um, so the labels here on the mappings, this is what the internal metadata to Sage is. And then this is what you're gonna see in the, the source that you're trying to read from, right? So this is the stuff out of creator underscore SS, that's what's in solar. And okay. Yeah, so that's, that's a reader. The operators also do cool things. I guess what I'll bring out primarily here is that we try to fabricate a, a triple IF manifest URL for each of our objects that we put through. Um, and then the riders are kind of like the same story, uh, but the other way around. The, again, it's to the Sage internal metadata um, label, and then what you want to call it in the, in the destination solar. Put it all together, you got yourself a job. A job to do. Okay. Um, so, all right, so here's a high level view then uh, for um, how we do the ingest and how we get to access ultimately, right? So starting with a simple archive format, archive, or possibly some other format, but that's what we're kind of doing lately. Um, it's ingested by Magpie, it's written to Fedora. Um, oh, and I, sh I should say that in this little view here, the uh, folded corners, those are documents or resources. The, uh, the raised boxes, those are applications. And the arrows represent uh, calls or requests. So, you know, we do a command line request to Magpie to ingest an SAF archive. Um, Magpie does a number of uh, puts and posts to Fedora to get the data into Fedora. Uh, Fedora uses its LD path transform to make some requests to the solar core to uh, populate that solar core. Um, now the triple IF manifest generator is gonna make a number of requests of Fedora in order to uh, be able to generate that triple IF manifest, which it will write um, to its uh, cache. Uh, Sage is going to be uh, making requests of this source solar core, reading from it, and Sage is going to be also making, um, you know, write requests to this uh, destination solar core. Now, uh, the triple IF manifest generator, as I said on demand, will read the Fedora uh, PCDM RDF and be able to then write that manifest document. That manifest document, uh, that triple IF manifest is going to be read by both Sage and Spotlight uh, a little bit later in the process. So um, yeah, so uh, Spotlight was kind of our original uh, earliest uh, foray into putting out these uh, exhibits based on Fedora content. Um, we have in production right now um, a collection of Alice in Wonderland uh, illustrations. We have uh, a collection of uh, historic maps of London that's currently in pre-production, hoping to go production with that soon. A number of other demos. Um, and we create those in Spotlight actually by going to the um, management dashboard in Spotlight and saying, I read items from this IIIF manifest. And the recent versions of Spotlight, uh, they just uh, work, like a, work like a charm to do that. You know, you can just read the manifests in with great ease. Um, again, as an aside, I just want to mention uh, Avalon content. It's in the, in the same Fedora instance that we're using for our Spotlight and our Sage stuff. Um, we're just using uh, Avalon's built-in ingest toolkit. The metadata there are mods, um, unlike uh, kind of Dublin Core style stuff, which we're doing elsewhere. And uh, then finally, I want to talk about our new cool stuff, the discovery views that we built into Sage. So uh, Sage has an additional uh, feature set. In addition to the aggregation part, uh, it seemed a natural progression to uh, you know, 
make a little view into that index you're creating and uh, to be able to like pick and choose which fields you want to use for different tasks uh, like um, you know search uh, browse uh, and then what you're going to show on the results that come out of that so I'm going to come back over to my browser here I think we should be able to look at what we got in spotlight so so this is uh, the production spotlight exhibit. I'm not sure what's up with Alice in Wonderland right now. This is production, so this is kind of embarrassing. I'll have to talk to somebody. Some of the pictures are not coming through, but um, they are coming through on like your search results and stuff. So th this is all living in Fedora, and this is all uh, totally informed by a triple IF manifest. And if we make changes in Fedora, then we can recreate that manifest and the changes will come through in spotlight. Um, the other stuff we have in spotlight uh, this one is uh, that Austin's 1830 map of Texas that's living in D space and this imagine your story one that one um, is actually a homegrown spotlight exhibit. It was just made in spotlight itself. So uh, Still building out uh, these exhibits as you can see um, Now on the sage side I'm going to show you um, Our latest uh, discovery view that we've created that's going to be going to production soon we trust so it's the Burger, Cl Burger Clunan collection of decorative papers or decorated papers. I don't know. Uh, I'm not the curator, but I do <laughs> try to populate metadata on behalf of the curator. And um, how am I doing on time? Uh, four more minutes or so. Oh, fantastic. That's plenty of time. Yeah. So uh, we can see a nice looking... Um, searchable, browsable uh, set of these decorated uh, papers here. Um, yeah. I'm gonna tempt the demo gods by uh, kind of riffing on this, but we have uh, search capabilities. We have uh, kind of like these, uh, you know, fastening capabilities everything you might expect. And if Cantaloupe will cooperate, there we go, lovely. Yeah, so we have Mirador right there, different metadata coming through. And the way that's all achieved is on the discovery view. Well, um, you got places where you can configure such things as your little uh, sidebar image. Um, you get to pick what uh, fields you're going to be fastening on. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, the fields that you're going to enable for searching. And then this is pretty interesting, the results. Um, you can de decide whether uh, you're going to want to have them in the list view or on the individual item view. The grid is um, kind of a placeholder. It's not implemented yet, but that would be like kind of like a, you know, masonry view. Um, now, if uh, the items are found not to have, um, you know, fields for stuff like uh, thumbnails and resources, then we um, allow uh, it to fall back on a manifest. And the IIIF manifest is going to have uh, links if you dig down to get to the thumbnails and resources. So that's kind of uh, maybe a more elegant mechanism for uh, putting this stuff in. These uh, values that you see that are getting templated, those are coming out of the solar index. So I'm not gonna, again, not gonna do anything here. I hope I've not damaged anything. Just gonna cancel before I cause problems. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, the admin side is a little more half-baked than the, uh, like the user side, but um, I think y'all can see what's going on there with the uh, bias towards uh, customizability and trying to put that, um, you know, design aspect of the user interface into the hands of the curators. Okay, well, thanks everybody. Any questions? Hey James, this is Josh. Um, thanks for that presentation, that was great. Uh, my question relates to the um, thumbnails that you've got and um, we've had a lot of issues with our thumbnails, like um, 
being slow to load and whatnot. And um, I'm wondering, are you, are you caching thumbnails for all these images in Cantaloupe? Is it able to do that? Um, how do you manage that? Absolutely. That, that is exactly what is happening. If I click next for long enough, I'm sure we're going to see some that don't come back and we'll be sitting here and I'll get nervous because uh, they're not showing up. Um, so it, it is, it's, it's one of these perennial issues that we, uh, we're dealing with with the librarians, especially on the development servers that don't have as much horsepower. And uh, they're like, well, where are the thumbnails? And we're like, well, wait a minute. And then they come up. It's, it's a nasty usability issue. I, I think you can, you can address it with caching and you, you can address it further with uh, paying more money for more computing hardware. Um, I, I think some people might prefer to, uh, and this is probably a good idea in general, to pre-render those thumbnails and you could, you know, host them as separate resources on the items indeed. And you could um, reference those in the IIIF manifests. Um, I, I think longer term we want to go that route, but right now this is all just kind of cached by Cantaloupe. And occasionally when you lose the cache, um, the uh, performance is very, very bad for <laughs> the next user, unfortunate enough to come back after that. And see, here we go. We're running into that right now. So. Yeah, you kind of, you know, you either deal with these performance issues or you deal with cache invalidation issues, right? Like, because if you start caching them, then you have to worry about, well, what if, say the image were to change or you know how do you keep it in sync and so i guess it's uh there's a problem either way but i was just curious how you kind of manage it mm, yeah yeah well so i mean we kind of offload those concerns to cantaloupe um we trust in cantaloupe a great deal and, and we, we, you can always clear the cache if you want right. to you know regenerate the thumbnails but again it's a bad bad experience for the next person to visit the site thank you you're welcome. I have a question um, for you, James. And then I also realized I wrote one down earlier when Jennifer was presenting about Spotlight. And um, I think in the NLM example, the, the URL ended with BB. And I was just kind of curious to know what to what level are those URLs or how are they generated or um, what can you do about that? Or will it always kind of just be an arbitrary identifier of some kind? Like, like the URLs? Um... Like that, just this kind of URL, yeah. Because I noticed in the science, pr profiles in science, it was just slash BB. And I was just kind of curious where that came from. Oh gosh, I'll have to think about that. Um... Well, that, yeah. our profiles... <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Jennifer. Yeah, go ahead. Jennifer. No, I was going to say the the BB that is that stands for the collection and comes from the legacy ID. And and Doran can probably explain it further. But. Yeah, that's that's a bit of a legacy holder we kept for convenience. But I think the question is uh, is that generated? Is there customization options there? I, I think you can adjust the slug for that. Maybe. Um, I think uh, TA, our lead developer on that, is on the line. I don't know if you could thoughts on that, TA. You could clarify. Yeah, it's a slug. So you can modify it in in Spotlight. There's an option to to custom it, and um, because we we didn't like create item by item each item in Spotlight, so. I think we go into the back end and modify it in the database to change the slug. So in short, yeah, BB is a, is a slug you can customize in Spotlight. Okay, cool. Thanks. And I, I saw you um, kind of dinking around. <clears throat> James, did you see where yours is, is, seems to be coming from? Well, there's so many steps. I got to think it through, right? So there's a, a, a resource in uh, Fedora addressable by URL. You can you can get to the the JPEG or what via URL. Um, now we were having to URL encode those URLs uh, to be able to um, use them as identifiers, and it was gross uh, because you know you, they, they'd be parameters for um, 
like you know URLs given to other servers and stuff. And so on our triple IF manifest generation service, we uh, uh, started uh, minting UUIDs instead for um, those URLs and there's kind of like this internal resolver to it. And then the triple IF manifests are able to lean on that internal resolver of the triple IF manifest generator to uh, get at those URLs. And um, I, but that's where um, my understanding drops off. I'm not sure how Spotlight is getting here without some further research. I, I don't know if Spotlight is generating these or if this is gonna reflect something that I would see in the triple IF manifest if I looked at it. Yeah, I'm just curious. The reason I ask is I was recently looking at some um, usability guidelines um, for those with kind of some screen reading, things like that. And one of the questions had to do with the like readability or logic of a URL. So it just kind of had me think about our URLs and then looking at those. Um, so thanks.